Hello guys, I am just stoked. I've been looking for these shocks, these noose. Ah, here it is. Screaming Eagle Olin's shocks. Since I bought my uh, Pan America, I guess I got spoiled. That bike has seven and a half inches of suspension travel. And when I came back to Florida and got on my road glide, I found that I was hitting the bumps hard. I found that my that it wasn't handling as well in corners as my Pan America. And I was thinking I really needed a suspension upgrade. And then I found that Harley's recently introduced the Screaming Eagle by Olin's shocks with remote camsters. Well, I'll probably never use those shocks to their full potential. But I hope they're going to give me a smoother ride. I won't be hitting the bumps as hard. They'll glide over the bumps and they'll help the cornering of the bike. So I'm looking forward to installing these. So if you hang in with me on this video, we'll go over the installation process of installing the Screaming Eagle Olin shocks on a road glide. That's a my nice road glide special. Well, hi again guys. Welcome back to the channel. So I'm ready to install my Screaming Eagle Olin shocks on my road glide special here. So first of all what, I'm, what I decided to do was take it all out of the box, lay it out on the table and make sure that all the parts had arrived. So, let's go over everything. So here's what's included in the package. First of all, we have the shocks with the remote canisters. And we have the mounting brackets right here to install them. Here we have some longer spacers and four short spacers and the screws. Now, the reason for the four long spacers and the four short spacers is depends on how your bike is equipped. If you have a four point docking system or a detachable tour pack or a standard tour pack, uh, you will need the short spacers. If you don't have tour pack or the uh, four point docking system for a backrest or whatever, you will need the four longer ones. Anyway, since I do have a four point docking system and my uh, detachable tour pack, I won't be using those, so we'll move them out of the way. We also have the screws uh, and the washers that are involved. And we've got this, which is just your preset adjustment tool, which I can use to adjust the shock by just turning it. Next we'll look at what tools we need to do this installation. So for the tools I have a torque wrench which is rated between 20 foot-pounds and 100 foot-pounds. Since there's a couple of small screws and bolts with much less torque, I've got a smaller torque wrench as well. I have a three-quarter inch socket which will be used on the main bolts, the shock bolts. I've got a torque, some torque uh, wrenches and tools. I've got some uh, red and blue tread locker. I've got an Allen key. And that's it for the tools. Also, we will use a bike lift, which I have here, because we will need the bike to be vertical to make it easier to do this installation. The first thing that we're going to do is remove the saddlebag.
the next thing we'll do is jack up the bike. Okay, the first step will be to remove the original equipment shocks. So we'll start there. And now we'll do the other side. Next we'll be removing these two and for that we'll be using a, a Torx T25. We'll be replacing these screws with longer screws when we, ins when we install the brackets for our shocks. Now I'll do the other side as well. The next step will be to assemble the brackets for the canisters. To do that, I'll be using blue Loctite. We'll then take the short screw and put it there. I'm just laying it in place right now because this will need to be tightened later. And then I'll add some Loctite when I do the final tightening. So the next step is to, after we've assembled both brackets, would be to install both. So that's the first one. We'll install the other bracket. Again, using our thread lock.
So I've assembled the bracket, and as you can see, it's a simple assembly. The two spacers are installed in those holes, and then using the two screws that are provided and the small screw there, we've got the bracket for the canister. So next it's to install it. Next, using the long screws that came with the kit, we install the bracket into these holes where we remove the previous screws. You'll note that our spacers just slide right in. I forgot, I've, I keep saying I'm going to use uh, blue thread locker and I forget. So I'll go get some. And we use a torque wrench and torque these 20 foot pounds. And next we install the shock. Now, the shocks that I removed were 12 inch shocks. The shocks I'm replacing them with are 13. So I may need to raise the bike just a little in order to install those shocks. On these I'll be using red Loctite and I'll be torquing those bolts to 65 foot-pounds.
we raise the bike so it's lined up properly and making it install easier. It seems to be fairly close. Apply our Loctite. We're using the original equipment, screws and washers on the outside, and we're adding one washer to the inside. But I'll leave that until I have everything in place. I'll just get some blue Loctite and tighten down these. Well, this completes the install of the shock and the remote reservoir and its bracket on the right side. So, just repeat the process to do it on the left side. I replaced the saddlebags just to see how they look, but we still need to uh, do some final adjustments. In my next video, I'll be doing the final adjustments including the spring preload, uh, compression dampening, and rebound dampening. So, tune in next week to see the completion and the test ride of my Road Glide Special with the new Screaming Eagle Olin's Remote Reservoir Shocks. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, how about a big thumbs up? And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and I'll notify you when I make the next one. You take care. Have a great day. Shiny side up, rubber side down. Bye-bye.